some stratocumulus moving through Texas this afternoon, up at about 2,000 feet, and that's associated with warm air advection. And speaking of warm air advection, let's take a look at this plot. This is the 24-hour temperature change. Pretty dramatic colors here. And this is showing that parts of the Great Plains are rising in temperature. Now, this is for yesterday, on Tuesday. And you can see at the time, the plains was warming up and the northeastern U.S. was cooling down. And that just about marks the location of the surface ridge. Now, let's go forward over the past day or so. This goes through the overnight hours last night into this morning. And that's where we're at right now. So there's been quite a warm up from the Midwest down to the Great Plains, and especially up in the High Plains where we've had downslope flow setting in in Montana, Alberta, Saskatchewan, and the Dakotas as well. And the warm air advection, yep, there it is. Let's check it out on the surface map. There's the weather picture for this eighth day of December. Hard to believe that Christmas is only a couple weeks away. I still have not finished my shopping. Some very warm temperatures down there along the Texas Gulf Coast. 84 if you're working on an oil platform out there in the Gulf of Mexico. Some very toasty temperatures. And down in Junction, 81 degrees and 80s around San Antonio. Contrast that with the 50s and 60s in Northeast Texas. So we've definitely got that warm air advection pattern over the top of that cold dome, and that's producing some isentropic lift. And that's what you see on that opening clip, some stratocumulus formed by isentropic lift with a little bit of surface convection, but most of that is due to the fact that it's all overcast. That's some layer dynamics at work. Elsewhere around the country, there's that outgoing ridge to the east of that, we've got still some cold air advection. You can see that it is in place across Virginia and Pennsylvania, and they are getting some snow in places like Altoona State College, all the way up to Binghamton and Syracuse, Rochester. Snow is coming down, and of course, quite a bit of it around Ontario, Toronto, North Bay, and Montreal. In the Central Plains, a substantial warm-up 50s in South Dakota, 40s, and even a few 50s in Montana. And there's that southwesterly flow, and also the lee side troughing extending from the Black Hills and down to the Panhandle, almost 60 degrees. A very narrow dry sector down here in the Trans-Pecos region of Texas. And then we get back into Arizona. That's a little bit of modifying polar air. You can see the slight northerly component in some places, but this is turning pretty quickly into a, a warm December air mass. 68 there at Phoenix, and probably it's going to be even a little bit warmer tomorrow. In the northwestern U.S., a fresh outbreak of cold air coming down through Oregon, some showers out there west of Medford, but overall it's a fairly dry system. Let's take a look out in the Pacific. Not much going on. That might be a wannabe atmospheric river. Not much of one. It is bringing some showers there to the California coast. But overall, it's a fairly dry pattern dominated by low-level cold air advection producing these showers out over the North Pacific waters. In Alaska, things are still running mild for this time of year. Remember, last week we had minus 40s at Fort Yukon and close to Fairbanks. That's warmed up by about 40 to 50 degrees. So this afternoon, we're under kind of a stagnant pattern. Some weather systems out to the west over the Bering Sea. Not much going on there. The strongest system is way out in the Aleutians. Yeah, that's about as far as we can go. 41 there at, uh, I think that might be a Shemya. Anyway, let's head out to 
Canada. Not much going on there either. Looks like the patterns are dominated by outgoing high pressure and some cyclogenesis out there in the Mackenzie River Basin. And that's producing a westerly component, clearing out some of this continental polar air and warming it up a little bit. Still, we're hanging on to some minus 10s and minus 20s in the Northwest Territories. Very stormy out there in the Atlantic. I'll let you get a gander at this system. 970 millibar low in southern Greenland and quite a cyclone. So if you're in places like the east coast of Greenland, probably getting some heavy snow and maybe some high winds. On the populated western coast of Greenland, they're on the lee side of the ice cap. So that tends to be a slightly dry pattern. And we can see partly cloudy skies there and slightly warm conditions. Now, we don't have too many viewers in Greenland, so let's return to the U.S. and look at temperature records for this afternoon. These are forecast highs. Coming up close to records in Florida, looks like we'll be tying that at Vera Beach with 85. Then for tomorrow, a pretty substantial warm-up. Texas will be getting the brunt of that. I'm not looking forward to that at all. That means turning on the air conditioner. Dallas expected to break the record for the date at 81. San Angelo breaking the record by 4 degrees at 84. And Laredo coming up to near the 90 degree mark. And for Friday, this is a dismal picture. Lots of 80s and 90s. Most of those 90s down in the Rio Grande region. And Waco coming up to 87. We're going to be seeing 80s all the way to Tyler, Texas. And almost 80 at Memphis. For Saturday, we will have a cold front sweep down through the plains. That will kick the warmth out to the east. So we're looking at another warm weekend for Florida. And temperatures coming up near 70 in places like Washington, D.C., and New York City. So I've probably filled your head with a lot of statistical information. Let's revisit that surface map and take a look at the weather around the country region by region. In the southwestern U.S., not completely out of the woods. Clear skies, but there is fast flow in place. You can see the transverse banding across Utah, northern Arizona, and some cirrus coming down from northern Nevada. But overall, skies are clear. Got some of that fog hanging on in the valleys of California, Sacramento, all the way up to Marysville, and maybe even Red Bluff. They are getting some stratus and fog hanging on into the afternoon hours. And that is caused by moisture being trapped down in the valleys. And on top of that, an inversion as warm air sets in place across California. But there is a front up to the north. And there we can see a little bit of that in northern California into Oregon. A hint of northwesterly flow. And then we get into the bulk of that in Seattle and Portland. We've got west-northwest flow coming in from the North Pacific, and that tends to be a dry and somewhat unstable air mass. And you can see those bands of cumuliform clouds working inland and producing some showers along the coast mixed with sunshine. Those don't make it too far inland, so Seattle enjoying kind of a cool but sunny day. Montana, they've got some weather. I'm going to have to zoom this out a little bit. Now, you probably remember from the surface chart, we've got a front kind of running about like that with a warm front down into the high plains. And that puts this area here under downslope conditions. And we do have the jet stream crossing over that upper level system. You can see the bands of cirrus cloud just south of that jet. And on the other side, some subsidence. Most of these cloud forms here are dominated by some instability in the mid-levels and the fast flow helping to shear those towers out and produce some of the transfer structures 
you see across the northern and central Rockies. Some mountain wave clouds there in Colorado up to Cheyenne. However, most of the Great Plains under clear skies, that's indicating the location of that surface high. Some stormy weather in Florida as that cold front works down. That's producing these thunderstorms from Jacksonville down to Tallahassee and some more showers off the west coast of Florida. And then going further up the boundary, we're picking up the cold air advection pattern in the Carolinas. And as that front pushes offshore and we get rid of this high cloud, you're going to see streamers of stratocumulus off the coast of the Carolinas. That'll be tonight into tomorrow. And that'll be another sign of cold air advection spilling out over the warm Gulf Stream waters and destabilizing the lowest kilometer of the atmosphere. And as we move further north, we get more into the cold air mass. There's those snow showers working across Pennsylvania. And if we zoom this way out, there's the water vapor channel. That's the main bear clinic system offshore, the warm conveyor belt located in this area here, feeding these convective towers. And the warm conveyor belt working around the north side, helping to feed this convective precip shallow snow showers across New York, Pennsylvania, Vermont, and much of Ontario and Quebec. So you ask, what does this all mean? Well, not a whole lot, but we are seeing some changes for the remainder of the week. And what you want to watch is this area right here. This is the next system dropping south. That's the front. And let's roll this forward through tonight into tomorrow. And we can see we've got a southern rocky system making its way eastward. This is tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow evening. Some good snow coming down in Utah and Colorado. That's probably good for the ski resorts. We get some intense downslope there in Texas. That's going to raise the temperatures quite a bit for Thursday and Friday. So that will help set some of those records. So we're bringing air off the plateau area into lower elevations. You get the compressional heating, adiabatic warming, and record temperatures. And there it comes. There is going to be a front buried in this. We picked that out with the thickness lines right there. So that's probably the front trying to make its way in. Some cooling back there. Eventually the cold air will get here. That's also going to, it's going to funnel down also from Colorado right there. In fact, yeah, you can see it barreling southward Friday night through Childress and Amarillo. And then some of the feeble Pacific air works in the backside as well. Now, we are going to get some MCS convective activity for Friday night in the Mississippi River region. So Memphis, Baton Rouge, and Paducah, Indianapolis could be looking at some thunderstorms. Eventually, the cold air will sweep eastward during the day on Saturday. There it is, cold air advection for everybody east of the Rockies, except Florida. They'll get theirs eventually. And the fronts are going to be looking kind of like that little warm sector right there across New England. So it will be a little bit tropical. Moisture will be kind of high until that cold front arrives. We're talking Saturday. And then eventually everything will get cold. And then we're looking at the next system coming down the pipe for early next week. That appears to be kind of stalling out there for a few days. Moves through California. They get some rains into Nevada and it looks like the thrust of that will head into the central Rockies for Colorado for Wednesday, the same time next week. Here is where the models get kind of shaky, so we're not going to look too much at, into this. But that looks like a dry cold front. Clearly a dry Pacific front with a little bit of Canadian air working in the backside. On that backside, in that deformation zone, some heavy snow possible for Nebraska and then that works up towards Minnesota. Very potent, compact little system for Wednesday night into Thursday. There is going to be a lot of uncertainty with this, so take this with a grain of salt. But it looks like 
somewhere on the northern plains there could be a very interesting weather system and along the warm front in new england could be a mixed bag of precip in that area but as you can see we've got a deep fetch of warm air coming up off the gulf so i think we're going to be right back into that crazy summertime pattern around midweek and i'm hoping we get a pattern change after that because i i can't take any more of this we need it to be cold for christmas you know the model does trend kind of cold at the end but we will just wait and see on that and that's all I've got for this Wednesday edition. I want to thank Jerome Mandala. I appreciate your Patreon contribution and for being part of the channel. We will see everybody back here on Friday. Hope you have a great Wednesday evening and take care. Bye-bye.